Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam ala ba'd. So we were talking yesterday, we talked about water, the different types of water, and why is water important? Why, why do we talk about water in Islam? What does water have to do with Islam? Hmm. Yeah, because we make wudu, because we have to clean ourselves for prayer. And water also purifies, it purifies us, our bodies, it can purify the place we have to pray, it purifies najasa. Water purifies impure things. And we talked about the different types of water. One of the things we mentioned is that if something nudges, something filthy or impure, falls into our bucket of water we want to make wudu with, can we make wudu with that water? You say yes. How could, how do you, why do you say yes? Hmm. What's the reason you say yes? Hmm, I don't think that's a good answer. I don't think it's correct. Can someone help him? If a little bit of najata falls in the bucket, huh? No. She says no. Okay, why? Okay. Barakallah 
Fiha, she said that human urine is impure. Human feces, which is number two, is impure. Uh, and also, the, there are some other things for adults that are impure as well, and we'll talk about that another time. Also, a dog's saliva. So a dog, if it licks you, his saliva, you know what saliva is? Huh? It's like his spit or his, you know, the fluid in his mouth. That's impure. A dog's saliva is pure. And the evidence for this is that in a hadith of Abu Hurairah, uh, that the Prophet وسلم, said, إِذَا وَلَدُ الْكَلْبُ فِي إِنَاءِ أَحَدَكُمْ فَلْيَبْزَلُوا سَرْعًا وَأَكْبُرُوا ثَمَانَةَ بِالْتُرَابِ So the Prophet وسلم, said, if a dog licks a vessel or a container that you have, then you basically you should pour it out and wash the, the vessel seven times. So if, for example, if we had a dog or we were outside and we were drinking tea and the dog came and he licked in my tea, my tea cup here. I can't drink it then. Why? Because his spit is what? Najata. It's najasa. It's impure. So we would pour out the fluid and we would wash the cup seven times. And the first time with dirt. The reason why that is, first and foremost, because that's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. So we get that ruling straight from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when a dog licks your container, the thing you're going to drink from or eat from or something, you have to get rid of that stuff and you have to wash it seven times with water, and one time with dirt. So, the scholars, they speak a lot about when to do this, but the most important thing is that you, you should clean the dirt, use the dirt first, you know, use sand or dirt, and, you know, rub it on the, uh, the cup or the plate or whatever that it licked on, then wash it seven times with water. And then it will be pure and you can use it again. And that's in accordance with the hadith of Abu Huraira on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, another thing that is najasa and impure is uh, the blood of the women, the menstruation blood. That is when women, they get older, they have a time when they can't pray. And they have uh, this bleeding. From this, this blood is impure. So the women, they can't pray with that. And that blood is impure. If it gets on your clothes, you have to wash it. If it's on the place you're going to pray, you have to wash it. Okay? And I think that's well known. So that blood is impure. And the Prophet said, said, <laughs> The Prophet said, If the blood of menses, you know, this blood we're talking about, falls on the garment of any one of you, she must take hold of the blood spot and rub it, then wash it with water and pray in it. So that's how she gets rid of it. She should scrub it first and wash it with water to get rid of the blood then she can pray it. And even if there's a little bit of blood left after she washed it, she tried very hard to wash it, and there's a little bit of blood, that's okay. It won't hurt her prayer. She can pray in it. Okay, just a little bit. A little bit. She tried very hard to get rid of it, and it left a little stain. That doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt your prayer. Also, another thing that is, uh, from the things that are impure, is the what they call dung of the animals. Does anybody know what dung is? No? If you go hiking with us, sometimes you'll know what, you'll learn some of the terms we learned about some of the animals and what their dung is called. Dung means, as you said, number two of the animals. 
It's the feces. It's their, their uh, remains or their waste from animals. So when we go out and we see uh, the sheep or the camel or whatever that's left, you know, he, or the, the donkey or whatever has left their, their number two, this is called dung. What is it called? Dung. It's called animal dung. Animal dung, there is some details here. So animal dung is impure. If it comes from an animal that we cannot eat. So animal dung is impure if it comes from an animal we can't eat. For example, can we eat uh, pig, Rashad? Why? Can we eat pig? Yeah. Uh, oh, good the nah, No, man, so you're just, I don't know if you listen. We cannot eat pig. Pig is haram, and that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. It's in the Quran that that is bridges, that it is impure, or that it is something anyway that we cannot uh, eat. So pork, you can't eat pig. So be careful in case you have some friends that invite you over, non-Muslims, and they say, "Hey, have some bacon, have some uh, uh, pork, have some chitlins." Okay. These things are made from pork. You cannot eat those things. Okay? So is pork halal? Is it, can we eat it? No. Okay. So, animals that we cannot eat, their number two is impure. Okay? Can we eat cows? Yes. So that means the cow's dung is not nudges. It's not nudges. When a cow poos, if cow poos on your clothes, it's not nudges. You should clean it off just because it's dirty. But hukman, as far as Islam, it's permissible if you have to, if you had to pray, but you should try to get that off. And if something is left on, it's not going to hurt you because it's not nudges. What about sheep? Can we eat sheep? No. You just had some today. You just ate some... Some ghanam, you eat some goat and stuff like this. You can't eat that? Was that haram? No, it's halal. You can eat sheep. You can eat sheep, you can eat goat, you can eat cow, you can eat camel meat. All of those are uh, pure animals and animals that we can eat in Islam. So, that means their dung is not najis. It's not najis. So, even, even if you had to, and there was no other place to pray, and it was time for Salat. And you had to pray in a place where the cows had left their number two. Or there was, uh, you should try to avoid that. That's not clean, it's nasty. But at the same time, Islamically, it is permissible to clean there. So, you can pray in the place where the, where the sheep are. Where they, where they keep the sheep and the ghanam, because they asked the Prophet Sallallahu in a hadith, is that, uh, uh, on that Messenger of Allah, can we pray in the Marabid al Ghanim, you know, the place where the sheep are kept or the, the, the goats are kept? And the Prophet said yes. And then about the camels, no. The camel, no. And also the camel meat breaks your wudu. Camel meat, eating camel meat is halal, it's lawful, it's okay. But you should make wudu after it. Okay? And that's from the hadith of the Prophet. So again, going back to the thing that we were just talking about, we said animal, animals, uh, the dung of the animals we can't eat. So Rashad, if you're in a place and you have to pray outside, and you find a place, but then you find a little bit, the, the, the people were feeding their cows in that area. Can you pray there? And there is, you see some cow dung around that area? It's dried and it's not going to get on you. Can you pray there? No. Why? Mm. Hmm? Huh? Can you, can you pray there? Mm. Huh? You can pray there. Uh huh. MashaAllah. That is one of the fuqaha. She's going to be taqhiyah. Masha'Allah, Allah, Yazid al-Khayyah. 
Right? So now you can pray there because it's halal. If the animal's halal, you can pray. What about, this is a, something that happens often too. What about if you're walking to the masjid, as we walk to the masjid, and a pigeon drops some stuff and it gets on your phone or on your shamak or whatever you're wearing? Can you pray on that? With that? Huh? Is a trick one. No? She said no? She said yes. Yes, yes. Yes, because the pigeon is halal as well. You can eat pigeon. Pigeon's not haram. You can eat pigeon. So because the pigeon is halal, that doesn't hurt you. You should clean it off because it's, it's, it's dirty, but it's not haram. It's not filthy. It's not najasa. And that's the point. So animals, again, to reiterate this, is that animals that are impure for us to eat, that means their place, their, their, their filth, or their pool, is najasa. And animals that we can eat, that are halal for us, then their poo is not najasa. That's the general uh, principle. Huh? Yeah, except the cow. Now, I know what? Uh -huh. Remember yesterday we talked about the sea animals. The Prophet said, when asked about the sea, he said, Huwa tawurun ma'ahu al-hillu maytu. The Prophet said that the sea, uh, the sea water, or, or, yeah, the sea water is pure. It means you can make wudu, you can jump in it and make ghuzl, make your niya and make, uh, clean your mouth and your nose, and that's a ghuzl, that's enough. And it's pure. So you can do that in the, in the sea. The sea water is okay. And the fish, the animals that live in the sea, they need the sea, they have to live in the sea. They can't live outside the sea. Those animals, uh, they're pure. So that means if they die even, those animals, even if they're dying, because the Prophet said, said, uh, that their their dead are permissible. So if you find fish that are dead, uh, or sea creatures like dolphins and things like this, even if they're on the beach and they're dead, it's halal to eat. It's halal to eat. But you should also be careful to make sure that you know that it's not uh, bad for you. That it isn't something that's spoiled or it has some other bad things in it. But the ruling in general is that it's lawful, it's permissible to eat. Okay, so those are also the last thing that I want to mention is that the, the, uh, the carcasses, they call it a carcass of dead animals, meaning animals that died of natural causes, that their body, what's left over, that's impure. If you see a dead rat, of course, that's impure. If you see a dead goat on the street, that's impure as well. You can't, because it died from natural causes, they didn't slaughter it, and then, you know, and say bismillah and so forth, but instead, it died of natural causes. Those are impure. That's also impure. So those are some of the things uh, that I wanted to mention about impurity and, and so forth. Um, also, I think we'll make this, uh, we'll also talk about something else, inshallah, in another sitting with some Allah, with Salaam, and Nabiya, and Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.